Portrait, I mean, it's Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 5. This is the season that really, frankly, should never be seen. I'm not sure I'm going to recap this season after this. You can find these on YouTube, not on Prime Video, but let's go ahead and get started. And as I said, this is one of the strangest seasons, at least that I know of. This is Season 6, and... Things haven't been this strange until now. They are in West Wickham, which is a very large, like, manor house. So very, very British. Uh, once again, they're in their pod, so they have some, uh, some degree of comfort. They're away from the wind and away from any rain, but, but it's a really sunny day, which is not the usual. So they'll have shadows and lots of shapes to consider. So that's really a good thing. Look at this place. It's enormous. Uh, but remember, it's Landscape Painter of the Year, so somehow you have to nestle this enormous form into the surrounding foliage. At least that would be how I looked at it. So I would look at this like a great big cake, and like you have to cut it up somehow, cut it up and manipulate it. This is our first artist of the day. Once again, we're seeing a lot of black in the mixes. That seems to be a theme lately. Uh, maybe it continues throughout the programs. I sure hope not, because we didn't see this in Portrait Artist of the Year. So it, it's it's a little confusing to me why it shows up so much in Landscape Artist of the Year. Black will always give you the value range that you want. It'll give you your darks, but it's going to dull everything else, all your other paints as well. It gets in there and corrupts. And maybe you like that look. Some people love Payne's Gray and use it all the time. It's great for, oh, you know, like cloudy... Um, cloudy dark days i see when when you would use it but but on a uh, but I, I stay away from that i don't let it on my palette because of how corruptive it is so this is our second artist she's quite accomplished this is yeah this is this is really really good design using complementary colors she's got orange against blue that's really smart and very interesting shapes so um, i'm going to keep my eye on her she's a uh, She's a real painter, for, for reals. <laughs> Here's the next one up. Uh, this is hard to see, but we're going to look at a close-up of it in just a minute. But we are dealing pretty much with black and white here, except for the um, yellow background, which is fine. Um, let's, let's get a closer look at it, though. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, well, it's a print of some kind, and very flat. You know, you don't get any depth in this, but I like the composition, good shapes. Um, there's some there's some good design going on here. This is too far away for, for us to see. We'll get a we'll get a better look at it in just a minute. Uh, it also is uh, surrounded by a large piece of white paper. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe we'll find out. Let's see. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, it's not surrounded by white paper. The white paper is involved. Well, this is interesting, um, quite industrial and very, very dark. I'm not sure what he's going to do on a bright, sunny day. Oh, my heart. Oh, I love that. Oh, wow. I really, really like that. So you get a sense of depth there because he's using diagonals. He's playing with, with your mind and letting you imagine that this flat piece of paper goes back into space. That's when, for me, I feel like my... Um, my work is, is, I'm happy with it. If I can create space in a, in a landscape. And this does that really, really nice. And there's not a lot of black going on here. And look how important that orange or rose road is. And here's our last artist of the day. Um, yeah, this looks like a really nice painting too. But once again, we'll get a, a closer up look at it. It looks like it's might be a view from a window. And in order to create distance, they've made the foreground really, really dark, and then beyond that, quite light. But I like the framing of those dark shapes. I think that's um, pretty clever use of design. So, so I kind of like that. It is small. Now, remember, the commission is going to go on a gallery wall, so it has to have, it has to read from far away that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be big, but but it can't look washed out. And something 
um, something that is actually this size on a gallery wall is going to, um, it's going to look like a postage stamp in the middle of a, a wall. Oh, I see. Yeah, that was clever. Well, looking outside a window. That's such a clever device. A lot of artists use it, and I, it never fails for me. Very, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got three, three, at least three painters that I'm pretty excited about. Now the judging begins. It's been four hours, but five hours if you don't take a lunch break. And we get to see what they've done with this West Wickham house view, which is a very challenging subject. Well, there we see them lined up so we can preview and see what they've all done. You can see that some work very well from far away and some are, work less well. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty interesting. Some people have sliced up that big house. Well, everyone had to slice it up. I mean, you really didn't have a choice. All right, here we go. Oh, uh, this must be the woman who had that yellow sky and it's a print. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about this one. It's very, very flat. This could be anywhere. I don't get a sense of, of place with this one even with a close-up. It's interesting what they what she does with the trees in order to get that texture. I'm not into detail and texture, or, and maybe you are. Um, it's very clean. I like that. I like that uh, orange color, which wouldn't have been there. The house looks quite uh, yellow, but in the shade, of course, it's going to take on some orange. Yeah, this is more, this is definitely a slice of the layer cake, right? which was smart to do, but it means that you're sacrificing any foliage that's going to be used. Uh, I, would, I would slice this up to have some foliage, but that's me. Yeah, close up. Yeah, really nice work with those whites. You know, that reflected shadow it, um, up above that first set of columns has a lot of orange in it. So this person understands color, and black is not corrupting everything. So that's really nice. I like this shot better, which is, is my clip, which is I like it when the, the top goes off the top of the canvas, but that's not the way that they presented it. They, they show the entire triangle. I, I like it when, when things, and they did it on the sides. They got rid of the wings by, by cutting them. But I, I, I kind of like that top if it was if it was cut a little bit as well, which, which I only know from experience. You know, painting here in Vermont, you have some pretty tall churches and spires, and, and it just doesn't work if you include the whole thing. Everything looks out of proportion, so it's really nice to have things go off the canvas. It gives you some pretty good opportunities. So let's see what the next one up is. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a print. I see now this is what this is what I would have done to solve the problem. Have some foliage along with your house. I like that. At least compositionally, that's what I would have done. Because it shouldn't all be about foliage and then all about the house. You know, that's that's the thing. You need a sense of place. Yeah, that's I really I really, really like that. This must be the printmaker, the one that I liked so much with that expansive view. Yeah, it's got to be. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's a good job. All right, so far he's kind of my fave, which hashtag Joe is always wrong means he won't win for sure. Oh no, uh, yeah, this one. Oh, there's so much black in those mixes. Oh, so much black. Oh, there's, I don't like the design of this. There's a lot that I don't like here. Now, this is my challenge. I'm, th I'm thinking that I might jettison the rest of this season entirely because I'm determined to be positive in my reviews. I, I look at these paintings as if I painted them myself. I don't treat any of it as a any differently than I'm, I'm as hard on these people as I am on myself. But, but I'm getting increasingly negative because the uh, painters in this season are just so um, not up to the task. And I don't want my channel to become negative, so I'm doing some soul searching. Uh, I think maybe the solution is just jettison season six and move on. I'm really not sure what to do. Uh, I have to, I've been thinking really, really hard about it. Uh, this is a really good drawing. I don't know how this, you know, I never know how you can compare drawings against paintings. There's a lot that's unfinished here. Oh, this must be the fellow that did that, um, uh, 
where once again that that industrial piece which had the um although it doesn't yeah, I'm not sure I'm not sure who painted this painting um it doesn't matter I'm not considering it as one in contention although they might as I said I they always disagree with me so I have no idea now we'll go on to the finals or the final judging begins um once again, it's been an incredibly long day, and I thank these artists for doing this. And we are about to find out who the three semifinalists are, but only one will go on to be in the finals of the season. But I, like I said, I'm very doubtful whether I will continue to recap this season. I just, I just find myself not being enthusiastic about it, and, and I don't want that to be the case. Um, let me know if you feel the same way. Uh, I won't take it personally. <laughs> Not about me. All right. Yep, this is the one I would choose. I think it solves the problem in terms of composition really well. The color is clean. Um, it's It has a lot of complexity, but there's also a lot of simplicity. Yeah, this, is, this was the one that I think solved the problem the best. Here's the next one. Uh, yeah, uh, I just miss a sense of place. You, you know, this building could be anywhere. And, and I think when you're doing a landscape, it's so important to show some degree of, of where your, the place you're painting is. Oh, here's the last one. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna consider this one at all. I don't think they will either. So now we'll get to the final, or what we call the semi, no, this is the final judging. Yeah, we're gonna find out who, who wins it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so surprised. See, I'm not a fan of what she did today. All the time constraints got to her. That's the only explanation I have. She's such a capable painter. But today, the four hours didn't give her the time she needed. Oh, that's disappointing. But, uh, oh, so I should explain, of course, that the painting on the left is the one they did in order to be accepted onto the program. The painting on the right is the painting that they did today. So, yeah, I thought it was the printmaker. It, they've got to choose this guy, right? How do they not pass this guy up? But like I said earlier, hashtag Joe is always wrong. They're not going to pick him. It's going to break my heart. And that's the reason why I can't, don't think I can continue with season six. <sighs> this is a really accomplished designer and artist. Wow. I would really like to see more from him. All right. And here's the last one. Oh, I do like this one. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'm wrong about the tip of that. The, the tip of the triangle. Now as we're far away from it, works pretty well, but there's no sense of space, absolutely no sense of space. It's very flat, but I like her entry piece very much. All right, we're about to see who the winner is. The winner is, dun, 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 dun. Well, to say the least, it's not the printmaker, but don't be surprised, because I'm never right. No, it is this one. Well, I love the pace that she entered the program with. I'm not a fan of what she did today. And maybe that's why they're um, having her go on. I don't know. Never know why the ju judges decide to do what they want to do. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. But I think it's going to be season seven. I think we're going to leave season six behind. Okay, bye-bye.